my guys that are 60s, 70s, 80s and that come in all complain that their penis is shorter than it used to be. We had a guest, Joel Green. We, we, we love this guy. We've had him on multiple times, but he uh, he talked about like the morning boner test. Like he was like, mm. if there's a certain point you don't get a morning wood anymore, you may want to get, you may want to take a look at something. So I'm curious about that. But also along with that, um, Susan came and she talked to us about the penis pump. We also had another guest that talked to us about it before, but we have used it. We've talked to our audience about it. Some people like I've, it's benefited me. And some people in the audience have like purchased it and they've talked about how it's been beneficial for them. But I'm curious, what is, what is your opinion on that? Cause some people say it doesn't work at all. Some people are like, Oh wow, it does help. And with all your talk about blood flow, vascularity, all of that, what does it do? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. And, and also I want to get back to morning erections Yeah, because that's really a fan. You guys are brilliant. I mean, you guys are totally on point. <laughs> you, guys have, you guys have done your homework. Uh, so penis pumps are really interesting. Mm. And to be honest, I don't think someone, uh, you know, guys that are in your physical condition would benefit tremendously from penis pumps. Okay. Um, I mean, it's great that you do. For me, in, in my medical practice, I use penis pumps in men that aren't getting nighttime erections. Ooh. So when you're younger in your 20s or 30s or 40s, whatever, you should be getting 30 to 60 minutes every night of morning, uh, you know, of nighttime erections, right? So anytime you dip into REM sleep, you should be getting erections. And REM sleep will last five or 10 minutes and you should be in REM sleep three to six times a night. So 30 to 60 minutes of, of erections, right? So, and I explain that as, have you ever seen that TV show, Naked and Afraid? Yeah. <laughs> Once, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a great show. You mm -hmm. can learn so much good stuff, right? <laughs> but have you ever seen the two contestants? You know, you got a, a young, hot woman and a you know good-looking, muscular guy, and they drop them in the jungle in Belize, and no clothes, you know, you got a machete and a fire starter. That's it, mm -hmm. right? You'd think, wow, they should be hooking up all the time, right? <laughs> You know, they're in the jungle, but they never do. How come? Because they spend all their time getting food, building shelter, swatting mosquitoes, keeping themselves safe, mm -hmm. right? That's the natural state. That's evolution, right? That's what we all do. And so when do they actually get an erection? When they're asleep. When they're asleep, mm -hmm. right? That's, your, that's the good Lord's way or Mother Nature's <laughs> way of sending our, our genitalia to the gym, right? <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if you're in your, I see a lot of diabetics, type one, type two diabetics, mm -hmm. right? These guys, they typically come in in the late forties and they're not getting erections anymore. And, you know, uh, diabetes affects small blood vessels, right? So they get problems with their eyes because they get small blood vessels in their eyes. They get mm -hmm. problems with the kidneys because you have small blood vessels in the kidneys. You have problems with your feet, right? Neuropathy and, and vasculopathy in the feet because you get small blood vessels in the feet. And guess what? There's small blood vessels in the penis. So diabetics get erectile dysfunction, right? And so they're not getting nighttime erections. I give those guys a penis pump. 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night, right? Otherwise, what happens to the penis? It shrinks, right? So the, the tissue... The penis is a vascular organ. It's the only organ in the body that moves entirely based on blood flow, mm -hmm. right? And it's the only organ in the body with skin, but no muscle, right? So how do you move the penis? You fill it up with blood. And the lining of the erectile body is called the tunica, right? When you cut that open, sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> when we put penile implants in like uh, diabetics or guys that have uh, had prostate cancer surgery, Right, the tunica is twice as thick as the aorta. So back when I was doing general surgery, we'd cut open the aorta to put the aortic grafts in. Um, you know, the, so why would the tissue in the penis be twice as thick as the largest blood vessel in the body? Right, it's because it has to withstand high blood pressures, and it gets banged around a lot. <laughs> Power Project family, how's it going now on this podcast? Mark, Andrew, and I, we talk about fasting a lot. We talk about the ketogenic diet and a lot of different types of diets. But Bub's Naturals has a product. They have the collagen protein, which is amazing. They have these apple cider vinegar gummies, which are like crack. But they have, <laughs> they are. These, yeah, they have these MCT oil powder packets that 
ah, I've never used to do this, but in the morning I'll wake up and I'll put it in coffee. And the smoothness, number one, in terms of the mixing is amazing, but the consistency of my energy through the day because of the MCT oil powder is peak. Andrew, mm. How's your experience? With yeah, no, it's, that's exactly it. It's like the best way to start the day. Uh, you're satiated, you're energized, and you're just ready to crush the day. Uh, so if you guys want to get in on this MC2 oil powder, head over to bubsnaturals.com and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Again, Bubs Naturals promo code Power Project to save 20% off. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. If you fracture the penis, if you break that tunica, you're not going to be able to procreate. So nature favored... Are you gonna be okay? Do you want? I'm oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> just, just like, just like morbid penis talk just, just gets me a little bit. Do you, I'm wanna, good. Do you need to sit down? Or <laughs> I, I looked up tunica. I, I, I guess I, I just wanted to get a visual. I get you some water. I'm or, good. I got it right here. I got the vapors. Yeah. I'm leaning on the desk, so if I think you won't even notice. You won't even notice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sex injuries. Oh. <laughs> hey, but re- how often do people come in with sex injuries? I'm just curious. Every like, Valentine's Day. Oh, oh, really? Every oh. time I'm on call on Valentine's Day, you can ask my poor wife. She hasn't, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't a, had a good Valentine's Day in years. Cause, like, uh, somehow I find myself on call and either someone like has a, a priapism or What's a fract. Oh, priapism is where... Um, you get an erection that lasts too long. Oh, um, they took some Viagra or something like that. Yeah, Viagra actually, you know, that's actually a gimmick. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Sure. You know, if you have an erection that lasts for more than four hours, please call your doctor. So like, that's not... They're, and they're all my patients are, are like, oh, wow. if, if I have an erection that lasts more than four hours, you're the last person that I'm going <laughs> to call. But, you know, guess what? <laughs> if it lasts more than four hours, you want to come in. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's some, there med- there's some medications uh, that will do that. Uh, there's a sleeping pill called trazodone. Uh, cocaine can actually do that. Oh. Um, and oh. usually it's um, a sickle cell anemia. You can, uh, you can get that, unfortunately. Um, uh, people that inject medication into the penis because they've lost the ability to get an erection. Mm. Uh, so, mm. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> we were talking about Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we were talking about um, penis pumps. Penis pumps. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. So it's exercise for the penis, right? And you stretch the tunica because when you ask a guy how long his penis is, he's not going to say, oh, it's like three inches because it, that's what it is. And when it's flaccid, he's going to say, oh, it's six inches or, you know, he's going to lie. So he's going to say it's nine inches or 12 <laughs> inches, right? Running around with a ruler dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because my guys that are 60s, 70s, 80s and that come in all complain that their penis is shorter than it used to be. Mm. And it's because they're not getting nighttime erections because they're not getting that stretch. But the other thing is, Inside the tunica, you have uh, like spongy tissue, right? And what happens if you clean your car and then you leave your sponge out in the Sacramento sun over the summer? It gets Mm. constricted, right? And so when blood flows into the penis, it has to open up that constricted vascular tissue so that then the sinusoids, sinusoids are like the little spaces on the inside of the penis, can fill in with blood, mm. right? And so it's all about how much blood pressure you can push into the penis. And if you want me to get go into a little bit more detail on how you achieve erection and why circulation is important, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, go for it. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So your heart pumps, right? And the two last places that get blood are the toes and the penis. That makes so much sense. Yeah. But you don't get toe erections, mm, right? Yeah. So as the blood flow decreases, <laughs> at least I don't. <laughs> <laughs> there was that Eddie Murphy movie. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking boomerang? about boomerang. Yeah, boomerang. boomerang yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, he got a toe erection? No, he no. just kept looking at the feet all, all the time. His, it was a big thing. Yeah. It was a big <laughs> red flag if her feet were wrecked. <laughs> Isn't there something about like uh, foot fetishes and something in the brain, like? Probably. Probably, I would imagine so. Yeah, there's oh, you know what? We're going off topic. <laughs> um, so, erections. yeah, yeah. All right, toe so okay, so <laughs> as the blood pressure to the, to the feet decreases, mm-hmm. you get cold feet, and so you put socks on. End of story, 
right? But the penis is different. You, as you push blood flow into the penis, it fills up those sinusoids and the, the deep cavernosal artery, the main artery to the penis sits on the inside of the erectile bodies, right? And arteries have muscular walls. So they're pushing blood into the penis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that it fills up these things called sinusoids, little chambers, right? And then those chambers drain blood on the outside of the erectile body. But veins in your body have thin walls, right? So they're easily compressed. So veins don't pump blood. It's more of a passive flow. So as you achieve a certain level of blood pressure in the penis, you block the backflow of venous blood and you trap the blood in the penis and that's what gives you a rigid erection, right? Because mm. the goal is to have sort of penetrative intercourse. So think of it this way, like you're on a tall building and the building's on fire and there's another building that's six feet away. So you want to jump six feet to get to the other building. Now, if you jump six feet, it's a good day. If you jump five feet, <laughs> it's a long way down. Yeah. Right? So think about it, like in the penis, you want to get 100 millimeters of mercury of blood pressure. If you get 95, it's going to be a frustrating night. Mm. And so I've built these algorithms around boosting blood flow to the penis so you can get to the point where you lock that blood flow in and you get a rigid erection and you can have penetrative intercourse. So physical intimacy and sex doesn't always revolve around penetrative intercourse, but you know, in our society or whatever, that's sort of the, the goal. Now, last, well, last question about this, maybe. Um, you said that when you have your, when you have people use penis bumps, it's usually patients above 40, um, maybe they're having some level of erectile dysfunction, but you also mentioned it's like exercise for the dick. Now, for individuals that are younger, that are 20s, 30s, is there a benefit there for them in the long term of using it periodically, once a week or whatever? Is there a long term benefit or is it null? Yeah. Well, you know, you, you have two alternatives. You can either use a penis pump or you can have sex. Well, yeah. Sex is great. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, I guess you could do both, but if you're getting 30 to 60 minutes of erections every night mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you're using it with your partner. Um, that's probably more than enough. Hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel because we continue to bring you peak content on this channel. Obviously, you guys are here. You guys have watched the whole video. So like, comment, subscribe. All right. See you later.